this was literally the first Eagles game in my lifetime where I had to turn off the TV for my mental health. I'm not joking, bro. Because earlier today, I went to church, my spirits were uplifted, and then I watched this game, and it's like, I just feel sad. I just feel depressed. It's just no way that we get embarrassed like this with our division rival. It's pretty pathetic. It's pretty pathetic, and I don't want to hear, well, A.J. Brown was out, and Devontae Smith was out, and you know, DeAndre Swift, I don't care. Because at the end of the day, even if you have your three best playmakers out, you should still beat the Giants. And all right, even if they lost to the Giants or they had or or if they lost in the first half, all right, fine. If you lost in the first half like 14 to 7, 10 7, you know, 7 0. Hell, even 21-14, I'll be like, you know what? Well, we're down some of our best players. You know, I'll give them some leeway. But there's just, there's just no excuse to be down 24-0 in the first half against the Giants with a Giants team that had a quarterback with a bum thumb. They had to literally... Substitute Tommy DeVito. They had to substitute Tommy DeVito mid-game. Then he gets injured. So it wasn't like it wasn't like the Giants didn't have any injuries on their side, too. They had some injuries. They were battling through some injuries too. But this goes to show you this defense is not ready for prime time. I do believe that this Eagles team can beat the Buccaneers. I believe they can. I believe they can. I'm not going to believe. I can't I can't fathom the Eagles losing to the Buccaneers that could not score a touchdown on the I, on the Panthers. I just can't. I can't. I simply can't bring myself to even say those words. But against the 49ers, if the Eagles beat the Buccaneers, oh, the 49ers are going to smoke the Eagles. And if you think that the Eagles are going to beat the 49ers, bro, you're smoking crack. Because there's no way that this defense that couldn't stop Tyrod Taylor slinging the ball to all across the field, how can they stop Debo, Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk? I mean, how can they? How can they? How can you legitimately say that they can do that? They can't. They can't. This defense is not ready for prime time. This offense, this game showed that this offense is so reliant on its superstars, and not only its superstars, but for its superstars to make superstar plays. Because what happens when A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and DeAndre Swift are out, and we miss their ability to create separation? The offense can't do nothing. What happened when Jalen Hurts was scrambling to the left, to the right? forever nobody got open so it was throwaways it was just deep shots just for the hell of it let's just let's wish for something you know but when you don't have a real scheme that you can rely on a real foundation that's the problem that's the problem if your offense has no foundation if your superstar players are out you can't do nothing because all the eagles do is rely on superstar talent. They literally got 11 wins this season based off talent, strictly off talent. It's actually sad. It's actually sad. Like, and you know what? I'm done getting mad at Brian Johnson. It's Nick Sirianni's offense. It's Nick Sirianni's offense. We know it. We know it. We know it. 
AJ Brown went ahead and said, hey, look, Nick Sirianni takes the blame for us. All right, cool. But what he didn't explain, and what if I was a reporter in that AJ Brown press conference, I would have followed up AJ Brown after he said, Yeah, we uh, you know, ran our own play in the Seahawks game. I would have said, Um, why did you run your own play? Were you not confident in the play calling that you were given? Because that's the reasonable question to follow up. Because why were they audible? Like, why were they going off script if they really trusted the play calling? They don't. They don't. So unless it's superstar players making superstar plays, these offense can't do nothing. It can't do nothing, bro. Now, I was encouraged a little bit from this second half. But again, it's against the Giants. It's against the Giants. Tyrod Taylor had another near 300. He had 297 yards. He basically had a 300 passing yard game. I mean, you're making this guy look like Patrick Mahomes out here. What's going on? What's going on? But, like, you see it in my face. I'm legitimately upset. Like, I'm legitimately upset. This ruined my day. This is the first game that I literally cut off the TV for my mental health because I was getting so upset that I was like, I can't take it anymore. I cannot take it anymore. This team is going to make my blood boil so much that I'm going to end up, you know, hitting a wall, punching something. So you know what? Let me just remove myself from this situation so I don't, you know, have to replace, you know, a wall or, you know, I don't want to do that. So I would rather just remove myself from that. So where the Eagles sit right now, they are the five seed. The 49ers are the number one seed. The Lions are the three seed. The Cowboys are the two seed. Um, the Buccaneers are the four seed. The Rams are the six seed. And I believe it's the uh, the Packers. That's the um, seven seed. Let me just check right now. Let me just check right now. I mean, yeah, I don't really care about them because we're not we're not gonna face them um, at all. Um. Yes, yeah, the Packers. All right, cool. So, ultimately, bro, like, this Eagles defense is completely, completely trash. I keep, I sound like, you know, a broken record, but I'm going to keep saying it. This defense is not ready for prime time. If you can't stop Tyrod Taylor, how can you stop? Dak Prescott, how can you stop that 49ers offense? How can you stop that Lions offense with Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, Amaran St. Brown? These guys are clicking on all cylinders. Let's keep it a stack. What up, though? Shout out Detroit. So we got to just call it what it is. It hurts for me to say this, but this Eagles team is not a Super Bowl contender. They'll win one playoff game, but... Aside from that, I don't see them being the 49ers, being the Lions. I I simply I can't I can't out of my out of my mouth say that the Cowboys will beat them. I can't say that. I simply can't, but you can imply what I'm trying to say. Like, so we just gotta face the facts, realize that this isn't our year. We need some new coordinators. I don't think they'll fire Nick Sirianni, although they should, because if you have a head coach that needs a great offensive mind as an offensive coordinator, but he doesn't even call the defensive plays. Like, for instance, Bill Belichick, he's a mastermind on defense, but he's going to need, you know, a great offensive coordinator, right? You know what? But that's cool because he can, you know, coach defense. What does Nick Sirianni do well? I've asked this question repeatedly. We got the week. I haven't gotten a real answer. The only thing Nick Sirianni does well, I'll say it again. The only thing Nick Sirianni does well is that he sticks up for his guys. He takes accountability. That's the only 
only thing he does. And I'll give him that because a lot of the coaches in this league, they don't take accountability, to, like Sean Payton. So I'll give him that. But in terms of X's and O's, there's nothing he does well. Nothing he does well. I hope that he can do what he does best and make these little speeches and try to rally the troops. But I don't know, bro. And this just ruined my Sunday. Man, I'm very upset. Fly Eagles Fly. We're talking Miles Johnson where you know. We always keep it real. This was a very, very upsetting, upsetting day to watch. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep believing in this team to win next week. <laughs> and we'll see whatever happens after that. Love y'all. Peace.